Hello, uh, we are from Russia, my name is Natalia, and today we are going to tell you some interesting facts about the Russian subcultures. And uh, of course you know that after the disintegration of the Soviet Union, uh, the words informant and uh, subculture are firmly fixed in our lexicon. And today we will try to compare uh, your subcultures with our, and um, it will be very interesting for you. Let's go! Rep was the result of frustration in African-American people in 1970s. This musical genre was born in the crime rider neighborhoods of West Bronx, which later spread to South Bronx and all over the world. People have different perceptions about the origin of rap music, but whatever the origin, rap is at present ruling the charts. Rap music has its roots in Africa. Rap came to America from the Caribbean islands. Their musical culture has constantly influenced the changes in American music. Slur in rap was commonly used by the DJs of African-American origin. They would shoot loud on the microphones, clap your hands and are you ready to party? People love to respond to these questions and hence, slowly and steadily these slangs became popular. During the 1990s, the rap style in the East Coast was fashioned by Wu-Tang Clan and No Shirts B.I.G., which was loud and brash, while in the West Coast the style was smoother. The main rappers were Snoop Dogg, Dr. Drew and Tupac. Uh, so, Russian hip-hop, just like Canadian hip-hop, is inspired by Rastafari music. Only a few Russian rap artists have achieved success. Bad Belian, Kasta, Siroga, and so on. Uh, rap music is getting popular day by day, with many young artists releasing their singles. These young artists bring innovations which are appreciated by rap lovers. Hello, I would like to tell you about skinhead subculture. This culture originates from Britain in the mid-60s and it was created by rock and rock community. And uh, they had uh, a strong fondness for fashion and music. In Moscow they appeared in early uh, 90s. Uh, since that time when they first they appeared, much has changed. And now uh, there is a crucial problem in Russia about skinheads because uh, there are a large number of skinheads who are responsible uh, for uh, for a significant number of attacks and murders. Uh, so they uh, usually uh, got uh, pulled together by one idea, uh, dislike for foreigners. <coughs> and they always say something like Russia for Russians. Uh, they consider themselves to be a real patriot, but it isn't so, because the student of culture originally uh, wasn't based on politics, race or nation. Uh, it should be said that um, uh, skinhead uh, uh, is not about uh, color, race, politics, uh, or something like that, uh, religion, nation. Uh, it wasn't about this. And uh, there is uh, one uh, direction uh, which was born uh, on New in New York City uh, in the 80s, which called Sharp. And uh, they tried to uh, remove the uh, scourge of Nazism and racism. Um, that's all. Hello, my name is Anne, and today I'm going to tell you about the subculture which is called the casuals. This subculture is a section of the football culture that is typified by football hooliganism and the wearing of uh, European designing clothes. This culture uh, appeared in the 1970s uh, when many football hooligans started to wear designing clothes and expensive sportswear. Uh, to avoid the police attention. Uh, they did not wear club colors. Uh, in Russia, uh, this subculture appeared many years later, in 1990s. Uh, music genres, which are popular between casuals, are uh, mod revival, post-punk, ska and oi. Mm. Uh, clothing labels associated with casuals in 1980s uh, include Ben Sherman, Phelan, Benetton, Lacoste, Lansdale, Fred Perry, and etc. Uh, nowadays, nowadays, many casuals started wearing clothes of popular brands.
but the major, major brands such as Ferrari and others are still popular. In Russian, the most popular brands among casuals are Fred Ferry, Lacoste, Lonsdale, Barbary, Reebok, Adidas. Thank you for your attention.